So next up, we have Harsh Lahiri. And Harsh is a developer advocate at Biconomy. And uh, Biconomy is a next generation relayer protocol. In other words, Biconomy allows you to create gasless transactions, creating a seamless and enjoyable experience uh, for end users. Today, Harsh is going to share with you how you can create uh, and integrate Biconomy into your Moonbeam DAP uh, to create gasless transactions. So thank you so much for joining us, Harsh. And uh, uh, with that, I'll hand it over to you. Uh, you might just need to unmute yourself. I think you just want to unmute. Yeah. Hey, awesome. Thank you so much, Kevin. And I hope I'm perfectly audible. Cool. Yeah. So going on, uh, I think there's some issue with the screen. But yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, moving forward, uh, I'd like to first begin a world with. So yeah. Let's today begin with the Biconomy SDK and uh, let's explore how exactly Biconomy provides you the infrastructure layer by which you can, uh, you know, resolve a lot of onboarding issues with the Web2 users and make them easy transition into the Web3 space. But before diving that, uh, before diving into that, uh, let me introduce myself. So yeah, I'm Hirsch on the side. I'm just a Web7 intern and what exactly Web7 means, I'm going to you know, explain you by the end. So yeah, uh, stay tuned with me so that I don't lose your, you know, attention. So anyways, I also do programming in Rust, Solidity, Go, JS, Python, Zik, and Haskell. And I'm on my way to learn Cairo as well as Swear. And if you have something more, you can definitely send over it to my way. And I would definitely love to explore it and learn it out as soon as possible. Moving ahead, uh, so let's talk about the bike nami as you can. Well, uh, actually we have three products. One is gasless, one is hyphen, one is forward. Gasless basically helps you in er eradicating the gas fees for your users being a DAP. Okay. Hyphen is our cross chain bridge, which can communicate within the chains and can swap the tokens, all of those DeFi stuff. And then we have forward, which is uh, doing the cross chain relayer messaging. So yeah, we used to have these three products individually, but then we had a thought of like, let's combine all these products into one and provide it as a SDK to our developers so that they can pick and choose whatever they want to use. And it's very easy to integrate them within the smart contracts, you know? Uh, so basically, let's say if you are building a, uh, a DeFi DAP where you actually uh, want to uh, provide NFTs when your users join and you also want uh, them to basically enable multi-chain uh, swapping and things like that. So at that point of time, you just only need to use guestless and hyphen and you end up using that uh, from the SDK and you don't uh, go with the forward. So things like that, uh, there are many use cases, uh, depends entirely upon the developer and the project and the developing team, how they want to utilize it. But the another great feature about Bytecoming SDK comes is that smart contract, uh, so, sorry, smart accounts are here. So basically, as Vitalik announced that, you know, we are going to launch uh, ERC4337, which is going to be an account abstraction. Um, and basically what it means is that they decouple your smart, uh, sorry, wallet account with your key uh, from your keys. And basically your account becomes uh, or functions like a smart contract, okay? So any developer can interact with it, okay? And they don't need to know the keys and all of that stuff, but it also provides an additional layer of security, which I'm going to explain you in the upcoming slides, how exactly it functions. And there are a lot of abstraction layer over this, okay? So, uh, when we talk about the account abstraction in nutshell, uh, these are the key components which are there. So there are three parts of the account abstraction. First is the uh, key abstraction. Uh, basically here the key is abstracted and it's not, uh, you know, disable by the DAP uh, developers and not even the network can integrate it uh, until and unless 
uh, explicitly shown. Second comes the gas obstruction. Okay, so here in, within the gas obstruction, uh, basically, uh, whatever the transaction total cost is there, the gas fee is included within that. And when you want to do the deep dive, you want to see the breakup that, okay, fine. Now this, this time I want to see the breakup, how much I'm spending and where exactly I'm spending. So at that point of time, you can see that until unless, uh, yeah, until unless you uh, double tap on it or double zoom in, uh, it remains abstracted. And the third thing here is chain abstraction. Uh, so yeah, uh, basically, uh, future is going to be a multi-chain future and um, the users uh, shouldn't be worried about whether uh, right now I'm interacting with a Polygon chain or a Solana chain or a Neo chain or some another chain which has just arrived and I should be able to use the uh, you know Web3 dApps just like a flow of Web2 right without any interpretations without any assumptions without any you know tensions in the mind that yeah what i need to do or what or which chain i'm dealing with and things like that and these three abstractions basically helps uh user benefit for smooth onboarding for web2 natives okay and you are also able to integrate the fiat flows also there are zero failed transactions because of abstraction and the user even gets one click experience which matters a lot for you know many users and uh, definitely we technical people might be uh you know overlooking at that but it's definitely a very very considerable factor mm -hmm. for building any dap out and then uh, mev protection is there for d5 apps uh, and you can even automate and schedule transactions because uh, basically your account has been decoupled and now it acts as a smart contract where you can write a code inject a code and things like that and then you also get readable signatures. The readable signatures uh, concept is still under the process where it's going to be, you know, formulated in a well manner. But yeah, it's an ongoing process and it's going to be mature soon. And at that point of time, we will be able to uh, use the readable signatures. Maybe it could be like how you have your UPI IDs, like, uh, I mean, QPI IDs or VPA addresses, or virtual public addresses and things like that. So yeah, or maybe like hush.eth and things like that. So in some manner like that. So how this exactly functions? So let's say if uh, a user wants to buy uh, NFT on any DAP from Ethereum to Polygon. So this is the process flow before using the a binomi SDK and after using the binomi SDK. So before using the binomi SDK, the user has to first go through the connect wallet process, then go to bridge UI, then they have to approve the sign the approval transaction, sign the bridge transaction, change the RPC network, and then buy Matic fee uh, for paying the gas fees. Then again, come back to the DAP, then buy the NFT, and then again approve the transaction. Then again. Um, sign the buy transaction so this whole process takes around 10 15 minutes for any layman user who is like somewhat transitioning from web 2 to web 3 or maybe a early web 3 user who is not familiar with all these processes uh, mm -hmm. beforehand and has to hustle at the last moment so we simplify this whole 10 step process into four step process the user has to simply go to the DAP, connect the wallet, simply click on buy NFT and sign the transaction, simple. So moving ahead, let's do some hands-on that how exactly our things function. So I have this link over here. Uh, let me put it on the chat as well. So. Cool. So when you come over here, 
uh, you have to if you are not yet registered on the bike nomi dashboard you have to follow some three to three step process where you actually need to define about yourself your organization and things like that uh, but once you are done you will end up on a dashboard like this where like i'm going to build out a dap just now i have like built many previously but deleted all of them to showcase over here how exactly it can be done so let's name this go guestless on moonbeam cool and i'm going to select the network as moonbeam testnet as of now okay we also do support the moonbeam mailing net uh, i think yeah we do so but yeah uh just for the sake of experimentation i'm as of now going with the moonbeam testnet okay and uh, let me tap on register the dap has been successfully created and you see the flow you see the process like it doesn't even take uh, nanoseconds it's just instantly done right and uh, once you go into the go guest list okay here you see a couple of options so basically when you go into the smart contract section here you can enter a name of the smart contract enter the address and then you can provide the api okay and even you can set the transaction limit that how much moonbeam tokens need to be spent by the dap user you can even limit it as per dap and uh, as per user as well so let's say 100 da glmr to a dap and one glmr per user of that dap so this is how you can bifurcate and you know you can set your own limits it's all up to you how your dev team wants to go with that and also uh basically uh you have to fill the gas station so either this fee is sponsored by the dap itself okay or maybe um you get uh, a third party sponsor or uh, who is also called as paymaster within these concepts okay so things like those are there and uh basically you have to check whether how you want to proceed like maybe you get a third party uh, paymaster who is sponsoring uh, your users Gatsby for your DAP. At that point of time, you have to set up things uh, uh, like uh, how exactly you want to do yeah. and things like that. So once you do that, uh, you can easily get it done. But as of now, let me see. I have prepared one, uh, one dummy contract what basically it does is it just creates one election thing and where you get a candidate name stored and then uh, you create one public constructor where you add on it's like the list itself where you uh, append candidate one two three and things like that okay and now candidate count is there and all of that so yeah i have compiled it compile and run so so this contract is running uh, you can get the compilation delays all of that and uh, you can copy paste the abi from here so let me copy paste the abi and now uh, i'm going to copy paste the address So right now I am not connected to the, the thing. But yeah, uh, like here you can come, you can name your contract, like compile guestless counter of soul, and then you provide the the smart contract address and then you can set up the custom forwarders so basically uh what is there with the forwarder is that uh 
when actually you are forwarding the transaction so it uh, takes uh, the gas fee calculates it from some tested forwarder we have and if you want to deploy on like maybe for example moonbeam network at that point of time you have to uh, check with the moonbeam that what is the gas fee uh, being uh, you know find on this particular transaction and based on that you have to associate or create your own custom forwarder which um, you know checks with the moonbeam network uh, on a real time and gets the data from there so it's that simple and uh, you can just add it i'm gonna provide you the contract details over here you can deploy it on a test net and then you can just come back over here enter the contract address and just tap on add it will automatically be added and whenever this contract is called uh, the gas fee will be born by the binomy as of now because it's on test net and you have uh, got certain tokens on the test net so uh, things like that are there um, i think the uh, cool so so yeah uh let me know if you have any questions uh queries meanwhile coming back to the slide uh so this is free of our product which is being combined to the sdk uh i would be uh sharing the deck link as well as the wait list to the sdk our sdk is going to be public from 15th of this november onwards so yeah, right now uh, you can definitely sign up on the, the wait list and get early access to whenever it's launched. So yeah, that's all. Uh, this is the good way to connect over with me uh, on Twitter. I uh, will definitely post the link in the chat as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm happy to take the questions forward. Awesome, Harsh. Awesome, Harsh. Yeah. So if anybody has any questions, uh, jump into the chat. And uh, yeah, Harsh, uh, there's a few more minutes. If you have anything else uh, you want to share, feel free. Uh, OK, cool. No. Uh, yeah, no pressure. I mean, nothing exactly particular. But yeah, if I had some questions, I could have answered that because I like. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much for, for joining us today, Harsh. Awesome.